Heading out on the road? You might want to pack a travel-friendly streaming device to make your stay a bit more pleasant. We'll get you started next. Hi folks, and welcome to the Core Cutters News Channel. In this video, we're exploring the world of streaming on the road. And why would you want to do that? Well, for one, having access to your favorite streaming services and shows might be a vast improvement over the basic cable or other in-room entertainment options provided by your hotel or dorm room. Plus, you won't have to enter your login info into other people's gear. So if you've always wondered about taking your streaming services with you, let's dive in. Picking Travel-Friendly Streaming Devices. So basically any streaming device from the Roku or Fire TV lines will work for travel, as will many other brands and platforms. But there are a couple of particular models that are especially well suited to life on the road. We're talking about the familiar streaming stick or streaming dongle style of hardware. They're relatively small and easy to pack, and with an HDMI connector built right into the side of these types of devices, you don't necessarily need to bring your own HDMI cable. And of course, when it comes to packing and traveling, the fewer components and pieces of hardware you need to worry about, the better. So let's take a look at some of the best travel companions. The Roku Streaming Stick 4K. The Roku Streaming Stick 4K is a great fit for life on the road. It plugs straight into an open port thanks to that built-in HDMI port, and it doesn't take up any counter or table space, which could be at a premium depending on your hotel or dorm room situation. You can check out our full review on the Roku Streaming Stick 4K, and we'll have a link included down below in the video description. Fire TV Stick 4K Max over on Team Fire TV, the recently released Fire TV Stick 4K Max shares the same basic form factor and dimensions as its predecessor, the Fire TV Stick 4K. And both models are slightly larger than the non-4K Fire TV Stick and Fire TV Stick Lite. In fact, any member of the current Fire TV Stick line would serve you well on the road, especially in situations where the available TV isn't 4K capable. Still, even if you are limited to 1080p output, you might want to consider the more recent Max thanks to its improved performance. Chromecast with Google TV And representing the streaming dongle style of hardware, we have the Chromecast with Google TV. And yes, the most obvious difference is a puck-like enclosure versus the more stick-style approach from Roku and Fire TV. Regardless, the Chromecast with Google TV is also an excellent streaming device to use on the road thanks to its portability and performance. And there are other travel-friendly options out there like Walmart's on-brand FHD streaming stick. As the name suggests, it's a streaming stick-style device with well-known software on board and an extremely affordable price. And honestly, price should probably factor into your decision if you're looking to travel with a streaming device. After all, losing or forgetting a $20 to $50 stick might sting a little less than leaving behind your $100 plus main machine. And by the way, if you do accidentally leave behind your streaming device and you don't get it back, maybe consider changing your streaming service passwords. Just something to think about. How to connect on the road. Okay, so you've checked into your hotel room, dorm room, or some other short-term living space, and you're ready to skip past the provided basic cable and stream your favorite shows and movies. How do you actually set things up? Well, connecting to the internet may or may not be similar to the process you may already be familiar with. Some locations use what's called a captive portal, which is a web page where you'll need to provide some basic info before you're allowed to use that particular network. Depending on the location, that info may include your last name and a room number, or maybe a temporary password the staff provided to you. On Roku devices, you can use your smartphone to make the connection. First, you'll need to connect your streaming device to an available HDMI port on the TV. Once it's powered on, head to Settings, Network, and then Set Up Connection. Pick the wireless option and select the network you're looking to connect with. You might see an option that lets you select that you're connecting to a hotel or college dorm. At that point, you might need your smartphone handy to act as a go-between of sorts. You should be asked to connect your smartphone to a Wi-Fi network from your Roku device. And you might see that captive portal login page where you'll enter the necessary credentials. Once you're logged in, the Roku streaming device will take things from there and connect itself to the actual network. On Fire TV devices, the process might be easier. When you connect to a network, you should see the captive portal webpage on your TV screen where you can log in and start streaming. And for the Chromecast with Google TV, you might need to download the Google Home app on your phone or tablet to connect your device to the hotel or dorm Wi-Fi. And we're kind of discussing ideal circumstances here, but if none of these methods work properly, there are other options, which we'll discuss soon. Coming soon, Apple TV. 
and if you'd like to take your Apple TV out on the road with you, it'll soon be a bit easier to set up. As we're producing this video, Apple's currently testing beta versions of tvOS 15.4, and one of the official new features Apple has mentioned so far is the ability to use your iPhone or iPad to make captive portal sign-ins easier, so Apple TV fans should definitely keep an eye out for tvOS 15.4. Pro tips and other things to consider. What about a travel router? If you're serious about cord cutting and streaming on your own terms while on the road, you might want to consider a travel router to act as the main internet hub in your dorm or hotel room. You need to connect the router itself to the proper internet connection, and then you can just connect the streaming device, your smartphone, and most any other gear to the router. That option might make setup faster and more convenient, especially if you're aiming to connect several devices to the same network. This route could also bypass sign-in issues you're having when trying to connect your streaming device directly to the network. They might also fare better when trying to connect to congested and or crowded networks, so your streaming device's own Wi-Fi only needs to be strong enough to connect to the router, and then the router does the heavy lifting. Travel-friendly routers can start at around $30 to $40, so they might make for a worthwhile investment depending on your needs. We'll have some suggestions in the video description down below. Try a Wi-Fi hotspot. If you're having trouble connecting your streaming device directly to the hotel or dorm room Wi-Fi, you can also try using your PC or Mac as a go-between. Obviously, this means bringing your laptop with you if you weren't planning on doing so already, but if you have the means, you can try connecting your laptop to the available Wi-Fi network and then creating a mobile Wi-Fi hotspot so you can connect your streaming device. We'll include links down below in the video description for Windows and Mac users to set up shared Wi-Fi connections. Can't change the input? Try the TV itself. It's worth mentioning that sometimes accessing those HDMI ports might be harder than it is at home. For one, some hotels might swap out the full-featured remote controls that originally came with the in-room TV, and in its place is a simpler, easier-to-navigate option that might not offer the buttons necessary to switch inputs. And if that's the case, then check around the TV itself. Some models offer controls along the side or tucked away underneath that allow access to change inputs so you can select the proper HDMI port. It's worth a shot. What if you're traveling outside the U.S.? While well, country support differs from platform to platform, Roku devices work in many locations overseas, although the streaming services themselves may vary from location to location. And even if, say, Netflix is offered in your travel destination, the actual content might be different from what you're used to at home, so just be aware that the actual available content may vary. As for Fire TV, here's a current list of countries where Fire TV devices are supported. Amazon also offered a Fire TV Stick Basic Edition a few years ago, which worked in a larger number of countries, but it's no longer available. If you do have one handy, however, we'll include a link to the list of supported countries for you to check out. And yes, we know that VPNs or virtual private networks are often used in these overseas situations. By and large, though, we tend to avoid covering the topic as using it in certain ways can sometimes breach the terms and services of a given platform. Still, we wanted to acknowledge that, yes, we do know that VPNs do exist. Your mileage may vary. Now this last point is very important because we're talking about a broad range of use cases here. So yes, your mileage may vary when it comes to setting up your own streaming device in a hotel or dorm room. Wi-Fi signals can vary from hotel to hotel or even from room to room. And not every location or business will use compatible equipment or reliable networks. So while you're packing your favorite streaming gear, make sure to pack some patience as well. You may need to jump through a few more hoops than you're used to in order to start streaming on the road. Wrapping it all up. So there you go. That was our look at traveling with your favorite streaming devices. And as always, thank you for watching. Now, to be clear, we definitely didn't go over every possible scenario and solution in this particular video, but we hope we covered a fair amount of territory. And if you're a seasoned cord cutting traveler, feel free to sound off in the comment section down below to share your suggestions as well. And of course, don't forget to click on those like and subscribe buttons down there as well as both of those help out our channel immensely. Until next time, my name is Philip Palermo. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Take care.